So a summary helps save many of the 100,000 human lives lost to aging every single day. One of them, one of these days will be you. It'll be somebody you love, your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, strangers. So what? Especially strangers. There are so many more of them. We, we have the opportunity to bring health and prosperity to the world. These technologies, when you see them, if you haven't already uh, been here, you can see what they're going to be doing for prosperity. And one advantage that most people don't really understand uh, when you get involved in a new technology or a new product or service is insiders typically have an inside track. And where it's possible, and we don't know where or when or we can't make any promises right now, um, but if there is some, such thing as, as um, human trials, well, as long as it's safe and legal, the insiders should be first in line. One example is I'm taking some supplements right now that are absolutely groundbreaking. They're, 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 they are revolutionary, huge breakthroughs. They're not on the market yet. One of them just came on the market, but I've been taking those for a couple of years. And that's simply because I was, you know, we call it, call it being an insider. And the last thing is be part of an emerging, emerging trillion dollar industry. We're going to bring a, we're going to spring a surprise on Wall Street, believe me. We're going to open up a, a trillion dollar industry before anybody knew what happened to them. Investors that come into this arena are going to be fishing in a largely unfished pond. Tremendous investment opportunities because most of what we're going to be talking about is going to be funded privately. We're not relying on the government to do this. We would be doing some donations and whatever, but primarily it's going to be for profit. Now, the last two days we covered pieces of the aging puzzle. We, as I said, we know what aging is. We know how to solve it. Um, it's not that simple. It's very complex, but we're going to be developing youth restoring technologies. The first speaker was Steve Spindler, and he talked about caloric restriction. Caloric restriction, or CR, is the only way that's ever been tested in mammals to extend the maximum lifespan. Lots of things extend the average lifespan. But in mammals, the only thing that's been able to do that is to reduce the number of calories and to be able to um, keep your nutrition up. And we're seeing about a 30% increase in maximum lifespan uh, with, with caloric restriction. Now, it's not a very fun and friendly way to live. Your people, you know, they're run down, they look like me, they're skinny, uh, cold often, you, you lose your sex drive sometimes. Uh, and it's hard, it's a Spartan diet. But people like Steve Spindler and other researchers are developing compounds that give you, they call them a, a mimetic, they give you um, the same results, uh, the same effect on your body as reducing your calories. You can kind of uh, have your cake and eat it too. Uh, Michael Rose, as an evolutionary biologist, has been at this for about 30 years, and over 30 years, he's taken his, uh, his, uh, animal, his uh, lab animal populations and he's gotten uh, his animals to live fruit flies, uh, which, by the way, are very good models for human aging, uh, has gotten them to live about four times longer by selective breeding, breeding the old ones with each other, the ones that die off, he didn't breed them. We went through about 750 uh, uh, 750 populations to get this. And then what's interesting is he's, he studied, again now with, with information technology. See, here's an example. Information technology gave him the tools to be able to read the genes, to be able to see which genes are, 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 are related to aging because he compared the long-lived animals with the short-lived animals and the difference was in about, I think, what, 400 genes? A thousand is it now? Wow. So we discovered about a thousand genes and they're 50 to 70 percent common with humans. And then the, using the same uh, information technology, they're able to take compounds, you name the compound, drug, supplement, whatever, and put it uh, to see what effect it has on the genes. They could, computers basically tell us what effect it has on the genes, good or bad or nothing. They're developing compounds now, supplements, maybe drugs that will finally be proven to be effective in extending lifespans. They're testing existing compounds, and we've gone through a bunch of them, and we'll be going through a bunch more. So no longer, they're demystifying this and putting us on the fast track to be able to supplement or drug our way to life extension. Telomere maintenance. Telomeres 
are the ends of your chromosomes, and every time your cells divide, their tips, they, they shorten, they're there to protect the chromosomes, until they get short enough where your, your uh, cells die. The um, germ lines, your, your reproductive cells, have, uh, have a, a, an enzyme called telomerase, which keeps the telomeres long. And the, your somatic cells, the cells in your body, uh, lose that ability. And what Bill is doing is Sierra Sciences and some other people, um, Geron has done, uh, done it, is identify com existing compounds to see which ones can uh, increase the amount of telomerase, which would lengthen your telomeres. And they've screened, I think it's 161,000 chemical screens so far. They've got 33 hits. They found compounds mostly toxic, so they have to work their way around that. But there is one compound developed by uh, Geron, is TA65, that actually does, uh, is proven to, to lengthen your shortened telomeres. Not your long ones, but your shortened ones, which is, a, which is key and it's very important. Um, will this offer a cure for aging in 10 to 15 years? If, at its best, that's possible. But we think, well, I look at it as a piece of the aging puzzle. Virtually every disease is accompanied by shortened telomeres. Cross-linking, uh, you have, I'm just going to cover these real quickly. Uh, each one took about a half hour to get through 20 minutes. But cross-linking is when uh, your, your sugar molecules get tangled up with protein molecules and some DNA and also fat molecules. And that's called glycation. And then that's when, if you look at old leather, how it cracks or old rubber, it gets dry. That's what happens. You look at an old person and their skin looks like that. That's cross-linking. And what's frightening is it happens inside our bodies just as well. And what John is doing and some other people are developing cross-link breakers, drugs or supplements or compounds that would actually unwind these, these cross-links. And we've got some, uh, several compounds um, that actually do slow up. Uh, Bill Falloon, Life Extension Foundation, uh, has uh, car carnosine, for example, which, uh, keeps, which keeps the level of, uh, of cross-linking down. So, that is another approach to aging, breaking up cross-linking. By the way, that's mostly extracellular, uh, uh, extracellular damage. There was uh, one gentleman who had to go to the NIH uh, this weekend, but he has a way to evaluate each individual's immune system personally and tell you where and how it's weak and how to fix it. And then he's got ways including some new drug development, but lifestyle supplements and so forth, which he can personalize for you and take your immune system, re revert it back to where it was possibly when you were in your 20s. Now, do you know how huge that is? It's gigantic. And then uh, Steve Coles uh, uh, talked about, the, he's, he's one of the co-founders of Gerontology Research Group. Steve studies Supercentenarians. Supercentenarians are people that reach 110 years of age. Now, most of us like to think, when you talk to people, oh, yeah, I live to 100, I do this or do that. The fact is, most people don't make it to 100. In fact, less than 1% makes it to 100 right now. You need to be aggressive, folks. You need to take control of your lives if you want to hit 100 and not just say, well, I'm going to live to 100. Uh, there are about 76 verified supercentenarians in this world. Only 76 verified. So you can see that it's, it, it, it's, it's a very small population and it's mostly in the genes. Most of what we do to prolong our longevity or to shorten it is under our control. Genes control about maybe 30, 35% of who we are. But for extreme longevity, for supercentenarianism, genes are the main factor and probably the only factor. So by studying the supercentenarians, by studying their tissue, we can identify again, help identify the genes, uh, taking some compounds, uh, learn, you know, gene therapy, learning how to turn those genes on in people who don't have it. Uh, preventing and arresting dementia. This is a very interesting discussion. Um, what good does it do us if we start living longer and we get Alzheimer's and we lose our minds, don't recognize our family, don't even know our, who we are, we lose all sense of, of, of self-knowledge. Uh, uh, you know, self we have a peptide now, finally, that's not developed into a drug yet, and I'm going to go in, it is a drug, but it's not approved, 
that's about 90% effective in stopping, completely stopping, the progression of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. It does other amazing things as well. It's all natural. We have there are no known side effects.